Hello guys, welcome to online web tutor presented by Profotex Sessions team. I am Sanjay. We are learning REST API development in PHP using JWT. This is our part number 22. Inside this video session guys, we are going to continue about part number 21 that is users project API module. If I back to code editor, so inside last video, this is the file that we have created. Inside that file, we have made these two lines, included our headers, included our basic files as well as we had created our objects and inside this post request type we have collected our data from the body as well as from the header in the body we are going to pass our parameters like name description and the status but in terms of user id means jwt token we are going to pass with the authorization key inside header so simply we are going to make if else block alice data and this data contains a name key so let's say it's set or simply we can make as not empty means it should not empty also we are going to check about something called our description variable so let's say description so it should be description and third that is for our user id so let's say is not empty not user id this is for our status column now finally we are getting like name description and status inside body parameters otherwise inside else block let's say http response code 404 something not found stands for alice echo json in code it's not decode it should be in code and inside here we are going to declare an array and let's say status equal to zero or in terms of message let's say that all data needed now inside this if block it means that we have name description and status available with the body parameters now inside this if block we are going to check about jwt validation also we had seen about JWT fires exception when it get expires or we are going to use before using time. So we are going to use or wrap our JWT token code inside this try catch block. Inside this catch we are going to use exception class and if suppose we get any error so let's throw something called 500 something we have called server error or inside output let's say json in code we are going to declare an array inside this let's say that status equal to zero and message something what we are getting inside this exception variable so it contains a method called get message so finally we have done about the else block as well as about the catch block now inside this try block we are going to read our JWT data so before making this API called create project API if you have remembered that read hyphen data dot php we have also made that now inside this file as I'm taking a reference of that code what we have done so inside this this is the code actually we had used to read our JSON data so if I copy these two lines go here and pasting it here now this JWT decode static method contains three parameters it's all about JWT token all about secret key and the algorithm is used to encode the data so inside this decode method all we have two parameters present like secret key and the algorithm or all we have to set about this JWT token so we are getting inside these headers so let's say that JWT equal to headers and this contains about authorization key and it is nothing it's a JWT token so copy that and all we have to paste inside this decode method so finally we are getting all the data inside body as well as our JWT token means user ID inside this variable now by using our user object what we have created right here we are going to initialize our used variables so go here and let's say that user object go to user class and inside this we have variable called user id so again back to scroll down 
Now here we have used call this user ID. Now referencing about the class variable. So firstly we need to initialize that. So copy that name. Go here and let's say that our user ID is available inside this decoded data and it contains a key called data and it also have a ID as a key. All we have seen in our previous video. If we back to login API to clearly understand. So now inside this file if we have made our payload as we can see here. So again scroll down and all we have stored all the payload information inside this array. Now inside this array this is data variable and inside this data we have stored all the user data in the format of an array as we can see here. So if we want to read about the user ID we need to go inside this data as a key. So that's why after decoded data variable we have to go inside data variable and ID we are taking from here. Now successfully we have in sliced or let's put pass our value inside this key successfully in the same way we have to pass for name, description and status. So back to users class. The next variable we want something called project name. So copy that or before that only we need to slice this class level variable. So copy this project name and here all we have to write project name and it is available inside data name in the same way it contains about description key so it should be description again check here so description copy that pasting it here and it also retains inside this data variable and finally we have called status so it should be status again check here this is status so class level variable that's why we have used user object and it is also we are getting inside body parameters so it should be status so finally we have in sliced all the class level variables now next we are going to call our create project method so back to working file and let's say that if user object and here we have a method called create project and it if it's successfully executed then we have to go inside let's say http response code we are passing 200 it is it's just code it means ok and also echo json in code and inside here I am going to pass an array let's say status equal to 1 and as a message let's say user or let's say project has been created Otherwise, if we get any error then inside this else block, we also going to handle that so it should be 500 server error ego json in code passing an array let's say status equal to 0 and let's say message equal to failed to create project all we have done now so save all these changes and before running if I enable debugger mode so that if we get any error we get at the exact line so display errors and we are going to enable that so save all these changes for this create project API back to postman now we have to generate our token first so we are going to log in with the details called email and the password as test at gmail.com and password is 1 to 8 so if I check about the user ID back to table and we are using about the test credentials so the user ID is 6 so if we create any project with this token then it will automatically insert about the user ID as a sixth value so if we open database into a new tab also go to TBL projects table and inside this table right now we have no data back to postman click on send button and successfully here we are generating about the JWT token so copy this token go inside our API call and before that if I copy our token pasting it here and also we have to call our let's say create project 
API, this would be a post request type and inside headers application JSON content type and as authorization we are going to pass this key. So copy, paste and inside this body we are going to pass our variable called name. So name it will contain about the project one something project name list a description something about sample project content and also let's say status and as we know that actually we have made a status as a enumeration type something called which contains about pending ongoing hold and completed so at the initial stage I am to pass this pending as a value so copy that and pasting it here so if we click on send button now as we can see that successfully project has been created back to table browse here and inside this table as we can see here user id equal to 6 which basically we taken from our jwt token this is project name description status and all the rest informations Again, if we hit after certain time period, means if we go to our editor, login API, basically we have set expiration time is all about 3 minutes, means 180 seconds. So after 3 minutes, it is going to be expired. So if we back to Postman, let's create another project, project 2. And inside this, we are going to put as a hold as a status and sample project 2 content click on send button and as we can see that expire token it is because 3 minutes passed away again if we go to login API click on send button copy this JWT token and passed inside these headers inside authorization key and simultaneously if we click on send button then project has been created back here reload this page and all we are getting about the second project detail so let's change about the login credentials so if we click on sanjayatgmail.com and I think that password is not remembered in this case so again I'm going to register user so create user API and let's say user number 10 test 10 at gmail.com and password is from 1 to 8 again click on send button user has been created if we back to our table browse here and as we can see that user has been registered successfully now if we copy this ID back to our create project API or before that go to login and generate our token so this is the token copy that go inside create project API replace this token all we have done now we are going to take with the another user detail click on send button project has been created go here reload this page and inside this table now we are getting about the project details of user id 7 so by the help of this video session guys we actually seen about how can we use our jwt token to take all the user data and save inside tbl underscore projects so inside this video session guys if you went out then please drop your comment i will give my reply as soon as possible so for this video session guys thank you for watching and have a great day